Let's say the magic words. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel very shortly by our wonderful IT staff. At this time, I would like to recognize the chair, Professor Austin Serrett. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming uh, to today's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. It's my understanding that uh, the state of Massachusetts is allowing meetings of town boards and committees to continue being done virtually through the year or into the year 2025. So I uh, assume, unless I hear differently, that we will continue to meet virtually uh, rather than try to get ourselves um, in person. And grateful to the state for extending that permission. Uh, Okay, I'm going to call us to order and ask you to one, two, three, five, six, good, and ask you to signify your presence vocally. Alex, here. Sharon, here. George, here. Sean, here. Christine, here. And Austin is here. So we have a quorum, and we are joined by. Um, Will Fernandez from Colliers. Thank you, Will, for coming. Okay. The first um, item of business is the approval of the minutes of March 2nd. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. That's fabulous. Okay. Any corrections to the minutes? Okay, I'm going to ask you to signify your approval of the minutes vocally. Alex? Yes. Sean? Yes. George? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Paul Bockelman? Yes. Christine? Yes. Anika Lopes has joined us. <clears throat> Anika, we're voting on the minutes. Yes, thank you, and good afternoon. It's nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Okay. The next item is uh, item three, which is the report of our town manager. Town manager. I have nothing to report. That's new. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, thank you. Next item four is the finance update. Sure. Yeah, so we have a few, a um, couple of things to discuss. Um, so the first is we do have a couple invoices for FAA that I was going to bring up um, for January and February. Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, Sharon, can you um, allow me to share my screen? All right, so um, first one, uh, this first one is for $2,250. Um, and Craig, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but um, so this there's sort of dual invoices going on from FAA because we amended their contract um, to cover some additional services uh, related to the some of the rework that was done in the schematic design earlier in the year. Um, so that's, this, that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, and we'll approve these as a batch. But so this first one is uh, for January, and it's specifically related to that rework that was done, which is why it's such a small amount. Then we have this one. Uh, no, not this one yet. We have this other one here, which is the regular invoice for January for in the amount of $136,250. Um, you can see they've billed uh, for all of schematic design. We're into design development now for the next few months. Um, so they're billing sort of a flat 25% each month of design development. Um, so 136,250 for January. And then February, they just sent in the last day or so. And it's again, the same amount, 136,250. It's the next installment, the next month of design development. So I would look for approval of these three invoices for FAA for the months of January and February. Okay, we're gonna take them as a batch. I approve, I move to approve. 
Okay. Uh, second. I second. Okay. Any discussion of the invoices? Okay. On the question of approving Alex? Yes. Sean? Yes. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Monica? Yes. Thank you. Paul? Yes. And Christine? Yes. Okay. And Austin votes yes. So the invoices we are, are approved. Sean, are, do you have anything else for us? Yeah. So um, I guess this is an update. And um, yeah, this is more of an update. So uh, at the last meeting, I think I explained that we were working with Colliers to come up with an amendment to their contract to cover the additional time between um, when the project was originally supposed to be sort of bid out and yep. the, the updated date. And there were, there were some months where, uh, that weren't covered there. Um, so we had some back and forth and we've arrived at what we think is a fair um, amendment to that contract, which basically is to extend our current contract um, at the same rate per month uh, for the additional months. So it's a, basically an additional eight months. Um, and at the same time, the, the kind of good news is that the construction cost has gotten uh, less. So there's some relief to that additional cost. Um, the overall contract, instead of going up by roughly $80,000, which is uh, the additional months, um, it's only going up by about 25000 because there's some savings on the construction side from a, a more condensed construction period. Um, so I think at the next meeting, we're, we're behind a few months on invoices with Collier, Colliers. We owe them for the months of December, January, and February. And the reason we haven't, we've been kind of holding off is because we were doing this contract amendment. Um, so at the next meeting, we will bring all those invoices and this amendment forward uh, for approval. And then we'll be back up to date and uh, on track with Collier's. Uh, Sean, did you say eight months or four months? So the the number of months that we needed, again, Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, was about eight months um, from the original date that we were going to go out uh, for. I think was a, it was a, well. I'll let Craig speak to it. He'll he'll know okay. more. Thanks, Craig. Yes. Uh, so there's eight more months in the design and bidding phase, but then uh, the construction phase uh, shortened somewhat, and so in the end, it's a net increase of four months. Four months. Yep, that's what I understand. Yep. Okay. Thank. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay. Any anything else, Sean? Uh, nope. That's it. There's a couple little contracts that we're going to get resolved. Um, the contract for the additional renderings um, that'll be going in front of Paul shortly to get that moving forward. Um, and we're going to get proposals uh, to do some additional surveying work um, related to the the adjacent areas of the property. So that's another one that'll be coming through shortly. Great. Any questions for Sean? So before we move on, I um, I just want to take a, a a second to thank Sean for the work that he does day in and day out for the town, but in particular, the work that he's done on this project. Um, the project, uh, I'm going to come up with the right words. The project has not proceeded in exactly a linear fashion, <laughs> and that has complicated the work of contracting and the work of the billing and um as always and all that i know that he does sean has been on top of everything and really very incredibly responsive so thank you sean for all the work that you've uh, all the work that you've done thank you awesome you're welcome okay colliers there there are an awful lot of you from colliers oh my i mean it's not that we don't like you but <laughs> awful lot okay craig so uh, thank you, Austin. So uh, yes, I've, I've got some colleagues with me. Um, I, I, I'll let them introduce themselves, maybe starting with Tim. Sure. Uh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, we're, we're joining tonight because um, there are some changes that we wanted to make you aware of and, and introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Tim Alex. I'm an associate director with Colliers. I've been with Colliers for over 20 years. Um, I've worked on a number of different variety of projects um, senior centers, DPWs, but primarily in the um, K-12 or higher education markets. Okay. Um, the, the reason for me joining originally was to um, 
assist with uh, Craig and and Will with some of the activities that um, the different you know stages of a project go through. So a little bit more bandwidth from Colliers to help out on some of those uh, busy times from a you know a more senior level um, oversight. Okay. Um, but uh, we did want to let you know of some additional changes. Um, I I kind of have been getting up to speed for the past couple of weeks. Attended a couple of meetings, but um, uh, just started getting going. But unfortunately, um, Craig is going to be moving on. He's he's taken another opportunity, um, so he'll be leaving Colliers. And so um, the, it's not just one change of adding me to the to the team. Um, now we need to. Um, fill the shoes that uh, Craig is leaving behind. And so Dan Daisy is on with us as well. Uh, Dan's been with Colliers um, for, again, many years, uh, working uh, under Ken Guyette for um, a number of different projects that have successfully completed. And so there's a good working relationship. Ken will still be involved uh, from a director level, um, but he has taken on additional um, responsibilities with the company. Um, so we're just trying to make sure that we have a continuity and consistent uh, level of service. So, um, Dan, if you wouldn't mind spending a, a couple of minutes talking about your experience. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Um, as Tim said, I, I've been with Colliers for about uh, nine and a half years so far, mainly in uh, the K-12 arena, but also uh, public buildings, um, library, um, public safety building, bus depots, things like that. Um, and I've also known Ken Guyette for over 25 years. So we have a great relationship. So as I come into this project, um, you know, I do have a lot of construction background, you know, construction phase. So I think that's where we could potentially see some savings that, you know, I can do both PM work and on-site full-time construction work. So hopefully um, this is the beginning of a, you know, a, a path moving forward for this project. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dan. So obviously, we never like to see somebody um, switch out uh, midway through the project. But obviously, um, you know, we wish uh, Craig all the best with what he's uh, going to be moving on to. But um, in looking at um, who we have available and, and workloads, Dan is is winding down on some projects um, and we'll be able to get up to speed pretty quickly. And um, and as he said, he, is, he covers uh, project management, pre-construction services, all the way through construction. So um, by um, having a, a, you know, a, a seasoned professional like Dan joining the team, I think we'll be able to, um, along with Will's help and, and me stepping in, I think we'll be able to um, have a, a consistent um, presence and um, support uh, for you in this project. So thank you. Um, uh... I just want to get something clear for myself, Tim. So is Dan uh, now fulfilling the role that Craig fulfilled? Yes, essentially. That's where um, Dan will be stepping in. But um, he is in the midst of um, closing out some other items. Um, obviously, this wasn't a planned transition. Um, so I'll be a little bit more involved than maybe I was originally planning to be involved uh, in the beginning. And then maybe as we get to a convenient uh, spot, whether it's at bidding or as we enter into construction, we'll do more of a, um, more of Dan and, and less of me. So in the future, at least in the near term, we should expect to see both you and Dan at our at our meetings. I would say one of us along with, um, with Will. Okay. Um, as Sean knows, you know, we've been talking about our contract and, and, um, how best to um, service that. And there are, you know, we're working with trying to work as best we can within the limitations of our contract yep. and they'll provide yep. you with a level of service. And um, it's FAA, has FAA been apprised of this change? Yes, they have. Uh-huh. And they are clear that, uh, that Dan will now be doing what you were doing Craig. Yes. Uh, it, well, I'll say this. I will uh, make sure to reinforce that message. Yeah, we have a Friday um, kind of a touch base call with FAA, uh, which I joined for the first time just this past yeah. Friday. Yeah. Um, and before announcing um, to 
the design team or, or yourselves, um, we wanted to make sure that um, Dan had the, the time and that the projects uh, were lining up. We didn't want to introduce somebody and then realize that, hey, that's not really feasible. It's not working out. So we kind of held off on, on introducing Dan until we could uh, make sure it was going to work. Uh, so the answer to my question is FAA knows about this switch. Um, and again, I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Has the FAA met with, with Dan uh, in the, uh, the Friday? That has not happened yet. No, nope. that, that'll be tomorrow. Uh-huh. Okay, Paul Bockelman. Uh, thank you. So it looks like uh, Craig is literally moving on right now. Um, <laughs> so I have a lot of concerns about the transitions we've gone through with Colliers. I mean, we've, we started with Ken, we've got Craig, we're now going to Tim and then Dan. And I wonder, and I, I don't like all these transitions that are happening. Um, and I wonder if we can just go straight to Dan instead of this intermediary point, because I think... Um, I, I don't want to have another two handoffs coming forward to us. And I think I have concerns about that. Well, I, I agree with that. Um, we're going to try and get Dan up to speed as quickly as we can. I just didn't want to uh, overpromise and underdeliver. I think that um, we're going to get Dan up to speed as quickly as we can. My intent has always been, or at least for the past, uh, as soon as I was um, transitioned in, my, my, um, role is to provide support. We always uh, work as a team. Um, you always try and have some redundancy and overlap. Um, and so that's what I will continue to do, but we'll try and get Dan in as quickly as we, we can. And it's not that he's not gonna be involved until bidding or, or something along those lines. Um, but um, again, this is a relatively new um, development. We're just trying to um, make sure that you guys are represented and that we're not over promising. And like I said, and not being able to um, meet those commitments. And, and what is the role of Ken? Because he was sort of the backup, it felt like, to Craig previously. So Ken is a, um, his his role is really to make sure um, from a, a corporate that um, level that um, your needs are being met and he can um, gather resources to make sure that if there is issues that um, that he'd be able to identify those and, and bring on what's needed. Um, so it's more of a, um, you know, a 30,000 foot view versus a 10,000 foot view, um, kind of touching base, kind of keeping an eye on the, the project budget on a, on a consistent basis, but not involved in the day to day. Um, that was really Craig's role and, and Will's role to, to, to fill those functions. Mm -hmm. All the other questions? No, I'm good. Okay, so other questions for Tim about this transition at Collier's. I mean, I will say that um, uh, we have greatly appreciated the work that Craig has done. We've greatly appreciated his um, responsiveness his sense of the, the um, intricacies and nuances of the project. And uh, we will look forward to the same level of responsiveness and attentiveness to the intricacies and nuances of the project from um, Dan as he, uh, as he acclimates himself to the uh, project. Um, I think it would be really helpful if, uh, uh, we were uh, a little bit apprised of what happens at this meeting tomorrow with FAA. We wanna make sure that not only are we working seamlessly with the building committee, but that um, we're gonna be work, continuing to work seamlessly with FAA. So it would be great if uh, somebody from the Collier's team could let myself, the library director, the town manager, and the finance director know about uh, the so to speak meeting with FAA and uh, how that goes and if any questions are raised from FAA. Craig, I, I guess that's a, a question I have um, is, um, have you been, um, I assume this meeting that this touch base with FAA is talking about issues, kind of a working meeting. 
and that yes. anytime there are questions or um, issues that come up, it's kind of where we define whose who's court it's in and um, and then pass along those questions or, or provide that information. So I think that's probably been happening behind the scenes that you haven't been maybe necessarily aware of um, that will continue. Um, if you'd like to formalize this in any way, um, I'm certain sure we can come up with some sort of a, um, a way to do that for you. But yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we're all um, we're all together. I'm not worried about the formalities. Uh, we we will probably want to just reach out to FAA to make sure that they are um, also on board and understand the nature of the change. So I would simply saying if after this meeting that you have with FAA tomorrow, which you're going to discuss the personnel change and how that's going to work. If somebody could just send an email, it doesn't have to be, it's not a formal thing. We met with FAA here, if any questions that FAA had, and we'll ourselves try to make sure that FAA is uh, fully comfortable with this and understands it. Alex. Thanks. Um, so I just would echo what Paul said, <laughs> feel the same way. Um, but also, um, I appreciate that you're having this meeting with FAA, but I wonder if there are other items that are sort of potentially outside the scope of FAA and what comes to mind immediately is the potential rebates with Eversource if we're a net zero building. And there are multiple things that we have sort of going on, some which involve the architects and some that don't. And so I'm not sure if there's a planned meeting with the library director, or I, I don't know what the plan is, but I just want to make sure that all the balls that we have in the air in various places are handed off smoothly so that there's nothing gets dropped. Sharon? Yeah, one of my questions, um, actually I sent a note to Dave Zomack today, but it has to do with, we just met last week with the planning board, basically the whole department to get all of our, our ducks in a row so that we know which boards to meet and when. Um, and Craig and Will were there and I wanna make sure that all of those, <sighs> those important meeting dates will also get transferred over to Dan and Tim. Yeah, I'm aware of um, of the number of meetings and some of the discussions about whether um, there was another opportunity to whether combine meetings or, or to um, how to handle this. So obviously Will is, is still here. He's, he's gonna be um, that um, um, consistency for a little bit. Obviously, um, anything you guys can do to convince Craig to stay uh, would be appreciated. That would, <laughs> that would relieve some of these issues. But short of that, um, we'll work uh, with Will and, and yourselves to uh, make sure that we're up to date and that, um, that we don't let anything fall through the cracks. Okay. Any other questions about the Collier's transition? Okay. So thank you to Dan for taking on this responsibility. Tim, thank you for the support um, that you're gonna provide and the ex explanation. Uh, I don't know now who is now gonna handle the rest of the Collier's project update. Is that Craig? Uh, no, uh, Will is gonna walk us through um, our regular topics in, and um, and one of a, a new topic, the. Uh, interim locations, something that we've been working on with Sharon and, and George uh, okay. for a number of months now. Okay, so the next item is the Collier's update. Will? Yep, I will. Um, can Sharon or whoever's hosting give me a screen share permission? Is that possible? Great, is that big enough for everyone? Yep. All right, so we'll start with schedule. Uh, quickly moving through, uh, we received on March 10th, the 50% DD progress set. Um, that was sent to the LBC and the NLBC. Um, we've already received comments back from Andrea at the MLBC and FAA is currently reviewing um, and responding to those comments. Um, 
there may or may not need to be a meeting to discuss um, any questions FAA has, but those are under review. Um, the I'll move to our. May I just say, hold on a sec, Will. So you you said something I wasn't clear about. Um, you said that the fifty percent design development has been shared with the ML, the the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. That I got. Yes. And they 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 have comments on it. Or they have reactions to it. They sent comments to FAA, and Feingold Alexander is reviewing those comments. Um, nothing okay. too significant. Um, and, and if there are any outstanding questions, um, Andrea has offered to meet with us. Um, we haven't set a date, or there might not even be a need to meet. And, and what, was there any role for the this building, this committee, to be looking at whatever it was sent to the MBLC? Uh, I don't believe so. Craig, do you have any comment on that? I, I do, yes. Yeah, so um, the LBC does not necessarily have to review that 50% um, DD set. That was sent mostly for your information. And if okay. you're curious, um, we will have as a group a, an opportunity to review the full design development set. And at that point, that would be a good time for everyone on the owner side to dig in, take a look, ask questions, point out things that don't seem to be make sense. Um, but right now, that is not necessary. Sorry. Okay. Uh, even though on the schedule, that's fine. On the schedule, if you go back, Will, to the schedule. Yes. Uh, report on progress, 50%, meeting 10. So is the report just to let us know that the 50% documents have been shared with MBLC? Correct. And that okay. we hit our milestone and we're still on progress to submit the full design development package um, at the end of April, beginning of May. Okay, before you go on, is everybody clear about this? Everybody comfortable with what we just heard? Okay, all right, thank you, Will. Also, uh, design uh, document related, um, Berkshire and Feingold Alexander have received and absorbed all of the comments for the landscape design and okay. we'll hear a progress report at next month's um, LBC meeting specific about landscape. Okay. Quickly looking at our um, zoomed out schedule. So here you can see we are halfway through design development. Yep. No changes from last month, um, which is good news. We're moving along, hitting our dates. And now I will share. I have a, any questions on schedule before I move on? Okay, looks good, Will. Good. All right, now we have a quick PowerPoint presentation, uh, an update on our intern library locations. So Sharon, this document should look familiar to you. This is uh, the latest snapshot of all of the different intern location options we've identified. Um, and the plan today was just to quickly run through some pictures. Some are better than others for education and um, just at the end talk through some concerns and comments that Colliers has uh, moving forward and any feedback from the committee at that time. So, so Will, I just want to ask Sharon at this point, Sharon, do you want to just set, set a kind of overview of what has been going on with the interim locations and what we're about to see? Uh, sure. So I have to admit, I have not been focusing on uh, this chart that you're looking at right now. Yeah. I have been focusing on um, the next chart, which actually breaks down the different locations and the square footages. Um, I've been talking with the staff and I've been talking with George and Colliers, uh, just about, you know, we started with, hey, everybody in Amherst who owns property and buildings, we need space. And so we were able to find one, 
six, seven uh, spaces that are available to us. And so, so Collier's Craig has been working on um, filling this chart in that you're looking at that includes, you know, the, the budget information. Um, it's, we're still at a very high level point um, where we have figured out a way uh, of making the puzzle pieces fit but not the entirety of the puzzle pieces. So there's definitely still a deficit in square footage, uh, but we knew that going into this. I, I think at this point, what we're going to be looking for is to make sure that we're on budget. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Will? Great segue, Sharon, into the slide I currently have up. Um, so at the very bottom, you can see... Uh, we have our budget for the temporary space. Any fit out rent is $500,000. The actual moving to and from the various locations is $150,000. And I won't go through each space specifically on here. Uh, this will be distributed and feel free to take a closer look at um, this chart. But I just want to highlight, you can see we have in the middle the estimated cost to fit out. Um, these are working numbers and very rough estimates at this point. Um, so you will see these being fine-tuned, changed um, as we know more about each space and can get some real numbers at some point. Um, for these fit outs. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear to everybody. Why are some of them in gray, some of them in yellow, some of them, I mean, what is the, do the colors and signify anything? That's to signify they're a different actual location. So the North Square, there's like four or five different actual spaces within the entire North Square Mill District. And you'll uh -huh. see in a minute, I have a a okay. picture of where each of those are so okay. we can just quickly go over each space first we have the, will will yeah. you got to go back to the prior thing i just want to make sure there's a number at the bottom that says five hundred and fifty two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars yes what is that number please that is the current estimated cost to fit out rent design um these spaces we've identified so is it is it fair to say that right now we're a little over what we had budgeted correct okay okay any other questions before i move on any other questions about this maybe can, can i give you one more i'm sorry alex can yeah. i give you one more uh, yes, please. Des description of these spaces. So um, I was the one who color coded the spaces uh, to make it easier for the staff uh, and, and myself to really visualize our goal from the, a, a functioning library point of view for these 18, 18 months. I'd love it if you're a family, for example, and uh, you want to go to the library. I would love it if you didn't have to drive to five different locations to get it done. You know, it, you could be someone like me that needs her John Grisham book. And then you could, you know, I have a child that's uh, 13 years old that would want a teen book. And then you'd have a kiddo that wants a, a, a book, uh, you know, a picture book and, and on and on and on. So we were focusing adult, teen, youth services, and reference services in the mill district. The benefit would be that most people would just be able to drive there, lots of lots of parking, park, and then go to the various buildings. Um, there, is, there is no space, one space that's large enough for all of our needs. There just isn't. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so, so these three lines that are labeled in in gray, that's, um, you know, the majority of our public service desks, um, the, the Boys and Girls Club, you, you'll see that we're uh, proposing it, it's 
It's offsite, more in the center of town. We're proposing that to be for ESL. Um, the North Amherst Library has this beautiful new meeting room that will be opening up this summer. We're proposing using that space for programming, one of the programming spaces. And then the Munson. The Munson has this beautiful large hall. Uh, unfortunately, it's a polling place. So at least two times a year, everything that's in that hall has to be moved out. So I can't put something in there that is permanent, like stacks, for example, because um, that can't can't be moved out. So um, so it's things that we have slated to go in the months and I want to say it's like facilities and things like that. They're easily movable. So I guess that was the overarching. I wanted to give you more of a sales pitch. Thank you. And just Paul, before you get into the, the, the overage on the cost that's shown at the bottom, uh, Sharon, are you beginning to think about ways to reduce that cost? So this is the first time I've I've seen that. Like I said, I haven't been okay. paying attention okay. to that. Um, I do want to say that the folks in the mill district, they have been working with us so beautifully and, and Colliers can right. talk more about that. They're really donating quite a bit in order to, it, it's mutually beneficial. Okay, Paul. Thanks. Paul so, and then Alex. Okay, so this is a um, one proposal to address the needs with with six different seven different locations, right? It's not these are not options. These are all one. This is one proposal for meeting the needs. Can you remind us what the minimum requirement is of the MBLC to when we're under construction? What we have to provide? We have to provide all library services. So whatever we can't, so the, the collection is going to be the big thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so we can store it, you know, so it won't be in a browsable place. So when you see on one of the slides that Will is going to present, you'll, you'll see some of the notes that I've included. There's a difference between the collection that we will store, which is where we would have to be asked to go and get it. Um, and, and then we would deliver it to the, to the patron versus the actual browsable collection. You'll notice Notice in this chart, there's one there's one space that's got 4,400 square feet, and so that's what we were planning to keep the adult uh, collection, you know, for a for a browsable a browsable collection for for staff. So so basically, what I'm saying is is we'll go with we will get done whatever we have to get done, and there will be a lot of books that will be stored. And, and two other questions. One is, does it have to be within the bounds of the town of Amherst? Yeah. And um, another question, I forget what it was. So I'm going to ask Paul's second question, um, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a it's not a question. It's just an observation. Uh, I want everybody to understand that the, the Jones Library Board of Trustees has not seen this. So it hasn't been reviewed to the committees at the Jones Library. The trustees haven't signed off on the plan. And ultimately, of course, the trustees of the library have to sign off on this plan. So the kind of mm -hmm. questions that we're going to raise now may be re-raised in a different form when the trustees and the Building and Facilities Committee of the trustees have a chance to look at this plan. Paul, did you remember your question? I did. Do we get any credit for having two branches or does that, can we sort of say, hey, that service is now being provided at the South Amherst branch or the North Amherst branch? Oh yeah, we can, we can certainly, and that's, that's absolutely our plan is to increase the open hours at both of those places. But because I still need square footage for the collections, I need staffing at those service points. Um, so I, you know, the North Amherst library portion of that building is not large enough to take on any more collection. Um, and I, uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay. Alex. Um, thanks. You may have already touched on this. Um, so all of this assumes that within the square footage on this chart, includes the storage for the collections or is there and i'm going to add on to what may or may not have been paul's question is we have to offer library services in amherst but we don't have to store our collection in amherst so if there were a more cost efficient way to store outside of amherst is that something that we could do and i guess we'd have to look at the operational side of that as well but 
Um, yeah, I, did, I, I would have to ask the MBLC. I would tend to agree with you. I don't think that they would care, but I don't, you know, we don't want to be storing this collection in Greenfield, for example, because, you know, George and his team are already going to, already going to be basically a delivery service for these two years going between all of these buildings. So yeah, all of this stuff has to be taken into consideration. Alex? Yeah, I just, you know, it's not, I mean, we, ideally having books in storage and bringing them back and forth, but it, to a certain extent, it seems like we're doing that. So if there is some option, whether it's working with, you know, the universities and, you know, the bunker that they have, you know, or whether it's, I don't know, I don't know what's been explored, but um, if there's any potential cost savings um, in looking outside of Amherst or in conjunction with the colleges for storage, that would, that would be nice. Okay. Any other questions so far? All right, thank you, Will. All right. And Sharon, just a uh, heads up, the last slide is that programming function uh, table that you have seen. So we will get there. So this is our first space research drive office space. Um, this is this bluish green area would be our space on the first floor. Second floor. And then in the basement, 1500 ish square feet of storage. And this is uh, it is climate controlled. It is dry. There's a picture on the left. It looks like a basement. Um, just so everyone can get a visual. Moving on. Hold on one sec. I'm sorry, Will. It's going to be yeah. helpful if Sharon co-narrates with you. Sharon, what is what is the what is the idea of what will go in the research drive office space? That we were looking at, uh, it's a beautiful spot for special collections, uh, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, it's it, it's not climate controlled the way, you know, ideally, but it's much better than the way it's being stored right now. So that'll be able to take all of our special collections. We're also proposing tech services to be located there, which is not a forward facing uh, yeah. patron serving yeah. Uh, uh, purpose, uh, as well as administration. So, you know, me and the, the business manager would be located there. Okay. So, Will, before you go any further, any questions about this space? Okay. Will, next. And Sharon, please tell us what's the, what would be in the next space before Will narrates it. So, Will, take us away. So we will start up top where you see the blue box around the 59, 61, and 63. Yep. Uh, that is for the intent is to have the adult circulation and adult collection um, in those three combined spaces. I don't have any, you know, pictures the way I did the last one. You'll see it's all some uh information is better than others but the square footages are accurate and this was the biggest space which is why we were uh we were shooting for the adult collection the browsable collection to be there uh, this is also where people would go to pick up their holds this is where the mls the statewide delivery the optima van would come and deliver statewide deliveries that's to 69, 61, 63, as shown on Will's. Correct. Fif sorry, 50, 59, 69. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Very I close, mis but. I misread it, 59, 61, 63. Okay. And just right. below that is 69. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Sharon, that's the, the youth space. Correct. We were putting the, the children's room and the teen collection there. Um, they don't require as much space as the adult collection. And we want children's and teens together. Um, so that's what we were putting there. 
And Sharon, the children's room, as anticipated in box number 69, would function like the children's room at the Jones now. Correct. People but can the programming would be done somewhere else. You know, thankfully, what go, the mill district is really this, I call it a playground. And, it, you know, yeah. so when the weather is great, you can absolutely be outside and lots of programming can happen for people of all ages. But uh, during the winter months, the youth and teen will have to find someplace else to do the programming. And that's where the North um, Amherst Library comes into play, the new meeting rooms. So I'm trying to just understand the, the vision of the children's room at the space. So is it just a place where there are books or is it a place like the library where there's, you know, there's space to play and there's there's games? So, and... so like I said at the outset, we're not there yet. This okay. is a very high level. I'm trying to fit the square footages in as much as possible. Once, once we know that we can afford whatever it is that we can afford, that's when the staff will have uh, it'll be turned over to them and they can work together to figure out what's the best way to use the spaces. Okay. And lastly here at uh, the mill district down at the bottom, number 81. Um, uh, I'm not super clear, Sharon, what exactly is going in here. I know there is some storage for the adult collection. Uh, yeah, so we were going to put the, the reference department there, the reference desk, along with the internet computers. And um, and with all that remaining space, there's a little, uh, like, 300 square feet. We could store some of the books there for the adult collection. Again, not a browsing collection. At least that's not what I'm envisioning at this point. Staff yeah. have talked about, you know, if we have four or five, six different spaces, the possibility of having a holds pickup location at each spot. So that would help the patron, depending on where they live, you know, maybe they would rather go to 15 research drive in order to pick up their holds. So there's a, there's a lot of things that, that we still need to work out. Okay. Before we move on from the mill district, any comments or questions on the so far the plan we've started to develop here? Okay, well, all right. Next location is the former Boys and Girls Club, 29 Cottage Street, uh, right by the high school track. Um, no. So the, the, this, this location is the closest to downtown, and that's what ESL needs, because a lot of, of our patrons who are using the ESL services, they're taking a bus. And so there is a bus that goes to the Mill District, and there's a bus that goes to Research Drive, um, but they may have to switch buses you know, in order to get to those places that are further away from the center of town. So the beauty of the former Boys and Girls Club is that it's got a nice chunk of space. Um, and so that could be the home base for the ESL department. Uh, we were also planning some internet computers that could go there and some of the adult collection, the storage uh, portion could also go there. Okay. All right. Next space, I, this yeah. is the best picture I could find. This is the North Amherst Library, and I believe this is just one of the new meeting rooms, a um, 1,000 square feet uh, for programming. Correct. And so it would be, you know, we would have to reserve that space through the town. It is the town's meeting room. Um, but I mean, that's not going to be a problem. The town staff are awesome. Um, and the library, as uh, you know, Paul was asking that the library's open hour schedule will increase. So that's one of the ways in which we'll satisfy the MBLC's requirements, the open hour requirements. Anything else on the North Library? from anyone all right and last but not least the munson memorial library um this was for facilities and hopefully some more storage for the adult collection um one caveat to this space is I believe it's twice a year 
would have to be cleared out um, for voting. So. Correct. Um, I was putting, I was hoping we could use, so there's another space in the, the basement of the Munson. Uh, it's kind of an informal meeting room space. Uh, I was hoping that some of our collection could be stored there. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's what I was thinking about putting there. Um, and, and the same thing goes for the Munson building as with the, the North Amherst building, we will be able to increase our open hours uh, here um, to satisfy the state aid requirements. Okay. And last slide here is the program and function breakdown by space and over on the far right hand side here is kind of a quick snapshot of uh -huh. what is going to be in or proposed to be in each space. Uh, this is what Sharon just told us, right? Yes. Special collections, adult collections. Okay. But what I like about this one particular chart that you all will get, it will be emailed to you so you can see it e more easily, but there's a 12,000 square foot deficit. And I I wanted to explain a little bit. So this these square footage figures that you see at the top, yeah. um, like for example, adult circulation, that's the first column. Uh, and it says 5,117 square feet. That that's our existing. That's how many square feet we have right now for the adult circulation desk, which is, you know, holds and, and the actual computers and for checking in, checking out kind of a thing. Yeah. So that's where those numbers came from. I didn't want you all to think that those numbers were the future Jones Library. So the, so the deficit that you're seeing, the 12,000 square foot deficit is based on our existing need, not future. That You've identified sense. roughly 26,000 square feet, and we have about 38,000 square feet, and that's the 12,000 square feet deficit that you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Sharon, do you want to say anything else about this chart? No, I, uh, other than, again, going back to the budget, I feel like that's what this committee is, would be focusing on. Um, and whatever we can afford that's will that's what staff will figure out okay so sharon i want some context i think it would really be helpful to the building committee to have context so libraries all over the place uh have been renovated and expanded do you know um from your experience what have they done uh, their operations been dispersed like this. Uh, I, I assume it depends on the particular town and how much space. But it really would be helpful if you would give us a little bit of, you know, like it looks like we're going to go from one space to seven spaces. Um, how typical is this kind of dispersal of library functions during a construction project of the kind that we are going to undertake? Yeah, so I it, just like with everything, Amherst does not like anybody else. Uh, so A, you know, the Jones Library, we have not only, you know, do we have yep. an art gallery, do we have a yep. special collections department, do we have ESL? So that's one of the reasons why we need more square feet than a typical public library, um, A. B, so yes, you're right. Uh, when people are renovating their existing building, they yep. have to move out. Yep. In some cases, they're able to remain in the building while construction happens over there and then uh -huh. move. And then so but thankfully, that's not going to be happening for us. This is a more cost effective way for all of us to just get out, let uh -huh. the workers do their thing and then move back in. A lot of libraries, you know, are located in towns that have commercial property. So yeah. for example, over the line in Hadley, there's an empty, what, stop and shop or big Y or I don't know, hairdresser, whatever it is. That would have been awesome. If we could have had a big old empty grocery store, that would have been great. So a lot of towns have access to that. Um, when that doesn't happen, I've seen a lot of libraries just go into trailers. And I honestly thought that's what we were going to have to do. So I'm while you all may be really nervous about what you're looking at, I couldn't be happier because <laughs> because we'll be able to find spaces that are not trailers. 
And one other question, uh, the staffing, you mentioned George, you know, like running a, a continual loop. Uh, is there anything you can say at this point about the implications of this for staffing? Uh, not really. So okay. um, because they're going to need to know how many buildings yeah. before they can, they want to sit down together because they, they just work so well together and, and every function uh, depends on the other function. So, um, so they will all be brainstorming together about the best way to provide the services. Okay. So questions, observations about the temporary location plan at this stage. Um, Alex. Thanks. I just have a question about timing, I guess, because I noticed that some of these spaces require design and build out. Um, so in terms of the point, like, I don't know how, I don't know whether these things get built out in like three weeks or whether months. And so I guess I'm just wondering sort of what the timeline is around that. I'd love for Craig to answer, but before he does, um, so keep in mind that if um, timing is a thing, we can't, I don't think we could do anything in good conscience until we knew the project was moving forward. So um, I love the question that you've asked because it's absolutely something really important we have to keep in mind is the possibility of losing those these locations um, as well as the timing for the build out. So I didn't know if Craig could talk more about that. Craig, I can answer for you if you, my screen's still showing, correct? Yep, yep, go ahead, Will. This uh, orange bar all the way at the bottom, uh, we have a temporary location, kind of, it's not exact, it's a rough schedule, so you can see we're kind of halfway through that secure space timeline. Um, and then the design uh, build out would start late spring, early summer. Um, and then, Craig, I just realized I forgot to mention the spaces that need to be built out. If you could talk about those two options, the for the mills, the mill area that they've kind of laid out for us to maybe buy some time, like Sharon said, to know that the project is moving forward. Yes, um, that, that's exactly right. So there's two spaces. I think it was uh, 69 and the, the 59, 61, 63 space, the largest space and, and one of the smaller ones. Are, our understanding is that they are not finished, right? So you've got raw concrete slab uh, portion. Uh, the plans that uh, WD Coles provided, which are very helpful, uh, indicate that a portion at the back is um, not even, does not have slab because that's where you'd put your bathrooms. <sighs> Um, so there would be, those would be like small design projects, um, small construction, pro, you know, procurement and construction projects. And that is, uh, the, all of that work is something that um, is not in Feingold Alexander's contract to design um, and administer. It's not in our contract to manage. So those would be activities that would uh, fall on the, the library in the town um, to execute. Uh, we can certainly, you know, advise and, and provide uh, consult, but um, a lot of that effort would be by Amherst. Um, and then it, even even the schedule, you know, we blocked it out, but, um, you know, just that single line of orange rectangles uh, that needs some refinement. And that's, um, you know, something that, you know, the town would manage. Paul Bachelman. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the creativity that Sharon and Colliers brought to this. I mean, my goal here would be to minimize cost to um, provide, since we have two branches to provide the, the, the necessary services that we have, I have concerns about all that build out, the design and build out and who's going to manage that, um, that, you know, adding permanent features to, you know, uh, leasehold improvements to raw spaces is very expensive because you're dealing with plumbing and all kinds of stuff. And I'm not sure who will take that on as a project. Um, 
So I think we have a lot of challenges with this where we are right now, but um, it's, I think it's a, I think, I know Sharon has scoured the town. <laughs> there just aren't many options in our community. So, um, you know, you think we, we, this has, we have to drill down on this even more than we already have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Will, can you take down the, the, unless somebody has a question about it, I'm just going to ask you to take down the screen share. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, George, do you want to say anything about your sense of this plan? Uh, yeah, I mean, from I've I've been in all of these spaces except for the Boys and Girls Club. Yep. Um, you know, given what's available in the town, uh, I I think all of the spaces that we're talking about are reasonable options. You know, particularly the uh, I don't want to call it, uh, re the Research Drive space in particular mm -hmm. uh, is really the best option to store special collections. Um, and I think we could even fit more stuff into that space just because of the way it's laid out. And that space is mostly move in ready. They're even letting us use furniture that is there. Um, you know, I have concerns about the budget as far as moving everything into those spaces and whether or not it'll be enough and whether or not the timeline is long enough um because you know we have experience moving the north amherst library out of that building on and that was a much smaller scale project than this um so that's that's really my big concern moving mm -hmm. forward okay thank you george other questions from the building committee about this interim location plan I will just say again that uh, the library trustees are going to have to review this and think with um, the director about the ways in which this is going to provide the necessary library services during this period. Okay, if no other questions about the interim location plan. Uh, Craig. Well, Allison, I did want to offer up something um, for your information. So WD Coles has uh, made has provided two options, one being those um, unfinished spaces. If the library were to fit them out and, and pay for that, then they they would, there would be no rent for the time that the library uses those spaces. Um, the other option is WD Coles would fit them out and then um, the library would pay a rent. So there, there's a couple options that I just wanted to put out there um, for future consideration. Okay. And, and yeah, Alex. Did, Craig, did the chart include those two options or just the one? Include, it had both. Yeah, um, we assumed, um, I forget which we, we assumed. I think we assumed uh, doing the fit out and right. then having no rent aside from um, common area maintenance rent, which is very small dollar so amount. Could we have it presented with both so that, I mean, to sort of Paul's point about not wanting to have to manage that, it'd be nice to have a sense of what the cost would be if. Coles were to do the fit out and we're just dealing with rent. We, we can certainly ask for that for that information, sure. Great. Any other questions about this interim location plan? Okay, thank you. Colliers, anything else from you? Will? Nope. So um, I want to say on behalf of the building committee, uh, thank you to Craig uh, for the work that he's done, the help that he's provided. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure to work with you, Craig, to have your your expertise, your good judgment, and your occasional flashes of humor as we confronted these um, difficult challenges. And um, we wish you very well in what you, what comes next. And we hope we will never see you again driving your car with your FaceTime on your phone operative. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that is very that is very bad. And the town manager is going to send you a, like a demerits. I mean, that was that was really something. In any case, thank you and good luck in what you do next. But don't go anywhere because we may have some questions from the public that we're going to need your response to. OK, subcommittee reports.
design subcommittee. Nothing. Thank you, Christine. Outreach subcommittee. Nothing to report. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no correspondence that I know of. Uh, topics not anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. I'll just remind you that yesterday, the Jones Library Board of Trustees um, discussed the status of the project, where we were in the project, and reaffirmed its commitment uh, to the project, uh, thinking about uh, all of the things that have happened uh, in the interim. Um, the trustees voted six to nothing to reaffirm our commitment to the plan. Okay, next item is public comment. So I see five members of the public. Uh, if anybody wishes to speak, if they would do signify by raising their virtual hand. Bob Pam. Okay. Bring Bob into the Zoom. Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob. Can't hear you, Bob. Can you hear me now? Yes, and it's fabulous. <laughs> okay. Um, Thanks, Bob. A couple of quick questions. One is at the last meeting, I had asked a question about Hardy Board life expectancy. There was no answer at that time. Um, second, um, my understanding is that uh, Dan Daisy is going to be on full time. Is he on full time immediately, or when will that happen? Uh, third is I understand that the um, additional costs for um, design and supervision um, are being partially offset by a uh, shortening of the construction schedule. Is that reflected in the schedule? Uh, fourth is. <clears throat> on the research drive facility, it looks like while the basement is climate controlled, I did not see an elevator. Um, and if you are planning to store stuff there, that might make for some difficulties. Um, and I guess um, on the North Mill, um, we have been using that for materials uh storage and operations and i don't know whether the materials that are there the shelving and so on whether that represents fittings that are already available and consequently don't have to be moved or is all of that going to go back into the north amherst library those are my questions thank you bob oh uh, one more sorry um, oh we, we charge for the sixth one <laughs> um what I am looking at in the schedule is that the uh, actual bidding will occur on a, a date certain, uh, and that therefore there will be a date certain when the town will officially approve the new cost. Uh, it looks like the proposal here is for the um, moves and the rents to begin six months before that. Um, if that is so, then essentially there is an expectation that that move will occur before the final cost estimate, before the final bids, and therefore before the final approval by the town for this project. Um, if that is not the case, then that's going to delay the construction. That's my sixth question. Very good. Okay, so Hardy Board, Greg. So uh, the design team advised last uh, the last meeting that the Hardy Board has a product warranty for 30 years, but that it does require painting every eight to 12 years. So as a material, 30 years, but it doesn't need interim uh, maintenance, or per periodic maintenance. Okay, next question was about when Dan would be fully up to speed. Um, I'll pass that one to Tim. Tim, you're muted. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, yeah, so Dan will um, begin right away, um, but he does have some other um, commitments that we are, are winding down. Um, 
but uh, Dan will be able to um, provide the service that uh, Craig had been providing. Um, we do work on multiple projects at the same time, so I don't want to uh, confuse anybody by thinking that the Jones Library is the only project Dan will be working on or um, or that Will is working on. Um, we do work as a team and we overlap on different projects, so um, we will be able to service the Jones Library um, right away. Thank you. Bob, your third question your third question was about design and supervision. Could you just just say it again? It was that question. It was when um, Dan would be able to devote okay. the equivalent of full time. Okay. All right. Next, your next question had to do with research drive. Sharon? Yeah, so um, uh, yes, what we're putting in the basement there, uh, you're right, there's no elevator. It'll have to come down the stairs. Okay. But the, the, the public, you know, portion of it is accessible. And that was our... There is, there is a... There is a direct entrance to the basement, although it's not a ground level entrance, but it will alleviate having to carry things through the building to get it into that space. Right, and I think Bob's next question had to do with a fitting that was already done for the North Amherst. I can, yeah, I can respond to that. Um, most of what the North Amherst temporary space is fitted with will not be going back into the North Amherst library and we'll be reusing it in the temporary spaces. It's certainly not by any stretch of the imagination all we will need, but those pieces that we uh, are currently using in that space will be repurposed in one of the other temporary spaces. Great. And, and because the North Amherst Library is in one of those spaces, that's the, the one spot that doesn't need to be fit out. Like it's already got a bathroom. Sharon, could you speak to the question, the really interesting, good question that Bob raised about temporary locations in relationship to the uh, bidding and uh, possible town council approval? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm the right person to answer that question. Um, yes, I, <laughs> I, I think that the entire schedule, the, the tail end of that schedule has to be reconciled a little bit more. Um, and, I, and I think may, maybe Paul should speak to this. Um, I, I think it has more to do with updated cost estimates that are coming, you know, in, in the scheduling of the town council vote. Paul? Yeah, so I think I think we want we don't want to be signing contracts that we're not going to fulfill, right? No. So yeah. we we, do, we want the council to take its action or and get the final approval as soon as early as we possibly can, so we can keep the project moving. But yeah, I think that I think you're right that Sharon that needs some more refinement at the tail end of the calendar. Great. Okay, thanks, Bob. Thanks for your good questions. Thanks for attending. Other members Thank of the public. Yeah, thanks so much. Other members of the public wish to speak? Uh, I see no hands being raised. Okay, well, thank you um, again for a, a packed and uh, important meeting. Thanks for uh, to everyone. Uh, so let's adjourn the meeting and uh, look forward to seeing you all again in April. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.